Did you say that you're going to be an amazing physician because you have all of these skills and traits and whatever? No, I don't care about any of that. Mission Accepted Season 3. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Happy to be here. I'm excited for you to be here to share your story. Uh, before we hit record, you were talking about watching Mission Accepted, application renovation, and you said you were going to... Uh, quote unquote, give back when applications opened up so you could share your story a little bit and hopefully help those following in your footsteps. So thank you yeah. for doing that and being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, I want to ask you, why do you think your application was successful? I think my application was very honest. It's very honest about about my passions, things that I've done. Yeah, I, did, I didn't try to be too flashy with it. <laughs> um, I'm like, this is what I have. This is what I've done. Um, this is why I want to do medicine. Love it. In other words, you told your story. Yes, told my story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's where the difference is between people on Mission Accepted, I think, and people on Application Renovation. A lot of people on Application Renovation, especially if they have the grades and stats and everything, they aren't telling their story. They're telling the story that they think the med schools want to hear. And that's mm -hmm. such a big, big difference. So... I'm excited to dive into your application. We'll we'll take a look at it and and see where uh, where things went right and where things could have gone better, if anything. Before we jump in, though, nuts and bolts. This was your first application cycle, I believe. Correct. Yes. How many interviews? Three. Three interviews. How many acceptances? So I pre-matched to the school that I'm at now. Okay. So I don't know who else would have accepted me, but yes. Okay, so you pre-matched and then you rank them number one during mm -hmm. the, the match process. Yes. Okay, so that's a, a fun Texas twist is there's a pre-match process for Texas residents, and then you go through the match. Everyone still goes through the match, even if you pre-matched. So you could have matched uh, and gone through the match, rather, and ranked another school that you interviewed at number one, even though you didn't pre-match, and if that school ranked you high enough to match, you would have gone to that school versus the school that you're at where you pre-matched. It's super confusing right. talking about it. It's, re it's really logical when you kind of lay it out on paper. Um, so that makes complete sense. So you, you pre-match there, you rank them number one. If any other schools wanted you, we don't care about that because you, you got your match. Awesome. All right. Well, let's, let's take a look at your application here. We can see all the schools that you apply to. One of the things I love about TMDSAS is that it's a single flat fee to apply to all the schools. So why not apply to all the schools, uh, which is awesome. And then uh, non-TMDSAS schools. So you only apply TMDSAS. You didn't apply yeah. anywhere else. Okay. Uh, didn't apply previously, didn't apply outside uh, anywhere else previously. Awesome. Uh, one thing that's really interesting about TMDSAS is they ask for SAT scores and other, other fun things. Uh, and so we get to see that. Uh, we get to see your schools, where you've been. And as we continue to scroll on, uh, f Academic Fresh Start's a very interesting program that is unique to Texas. You did not do that. Um you were not planning on taking coursework between, so they, if, if you would have marked that yes, then TMDSAS would want updated transcripts. Again, it's a little bit different versus the other application services. And then we keep scrolling here, first generation undergrad, no, first generation graduate, yes. Um, so we get some kind of underserved, disadvantaged type questions built in here. And we keep coming, Pell Grant, no military, no red flags, no no misdemeanors or felonies. Good job. Uh, some stuff redacted out here. And then we get right to the personal statement. Now, TMDSAS is a little bit unique. There's only 5,000 characters. You didn't apply to any other application service, so you didn't have to shorten from 5,300 characters. What was the hardest part about writing the personal statement for you? I'm not a writer. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was that was never my strong suit. So um, I kind of, I had many drafts. Um, and I started off with the traditional, these are all the things that I've done and this is why I would be a great doctor. <laughs> and then I discovered these videos and yeah. scrapped those um, essays as soon as possible. So um, just figuring out how to 
authentically convey who I am on this paper. Yeah, this. yeah, I, I love it. And so we look at the, the first paragraph here, you have uh, a nice little, uh, your writing is good once you've figured out this style of writing, at least for a personal statement, you have lots of good showing and what you're seeing. Uh, locking eyes with the mother of a boy whose battle with cancer was coming to an end. So we feel that going on. You are hanging out with the doctor and uh, seeing this boy in the terminal stages of cancer uh, and not being able to go to Greece, unfortunately, through Make-A-Wish. And again, like the, the emotions, the showing that you have here of feeling a lump in your throat, prepared to face a, a man the same age as my brother, experience the unimaginable. So feeling that kind of compassion in you uh, of what you're feeling, which is, which is awesome, which is the right way to, um, to show these things. You come in here, you're witnessing this side of medicine, uh, the physician, being a physician is what you want it to do and, and why, right? What was it about being a physician, walking into those, those rooms, having the knowledge to treat and comfort them? So right off the bat, nice, uh, nice little story here. This is not your seed. It looks like uh, we go into uh, more uh, in, in terms of seed of like what led you down this path to begin with, because you're already in a healthcare setting here. Mm -hmm. And so we go here. Okay, when you're younger, you had close relatives hampered by their ailments. Such a common story of students who are in this journey and experiencing. Uh, as as young children, as older children, wh wherever they are on their path, seeing death and devastation, illness, injury, whatever, and going, I want to be able to do something about that. That feeling of helplessness, such a common, uh, a common drive to go into medicine. Strong desire to help them, wishing you had the knowledge. Right. So there you go. Such a such a common thing, and that's okay. It's okay to be common. It's not cliche. Uh, so you're seeing the, the physicians going through this process and you, uh, you struggled and you're like, I want to be a doctor. I don't want to be an organic chemist. Why am I studying this crap? <laughs> um, so you, you, you struggle. So here's a little bit of a red flag statement. I like to call it of like, Hey, my grades aren't the best. You'll probably notice that. Uh, but that's okay. And you are in biology class talking about sickle cell anemia. And uh, there's something obviously that that connected with you talking about growing up with your cousin, uh, not allowed to run and play because of, of his sickle cell crisis. So small little typo here, probably the fact that you capitalized sickle here didn't capitalize it here. It's such a small thing, like who cares? Um, <clears throat> a lot of it's it's interesting. A lot of pre-meds like to capitalize random things <laughs> like hospital is <laughs> capitalized. No, it's not like don't don't capitalize hospital. Uh, that, that obviously doesn't make a, a huge difference unless it was like super like annoying, like every other word is capitalized and it shouldn't be. Um, and now again, you're, you're piecing together this information, like, oh, wait, I guess this stuff is important and potentially this turnaround for you, um, to, to do well in your coursework. And again, that, uh, that continued drive to pursue medicine, which is great. So you're, you're in a hospital, you're volunteering, you're, you're hanging out with Steven here and telling the story of of interacting with him. So you you went to feed him, found out that he was transferred to a different hospital. Like, hey, Stephen left me. Um, and and just this whoops. Um, just this feeling, right? Of like, I I am here as someone who wants to be a physician and take care of patients and my patient just left me. That's a <laughs> that stinks. Um but you you talk about it, right? You're able to uh, be a part of his care and interact with other patients, wanting to be involved in more complex care, uh, just reinforcing that that desire, which is great. You're, you're giving a story, showing your impact on these people, and then talking about why these stories have impacted you to further go down this path of be a physician. That's a, it's it's simple. Right? It's it's not easy, but it's simple. Um, and then you are also here talking about kind of some aspirational stuff, which is awesome. 
uh, the mistrust in the minority community, obviously healthcare, the, the medical world has not been kind to minorities in, in our history, uh, recent history, unfortunately. And mm-hmm. so trying to say, hey, like I wanna, I wanna help be uh, a connection to that community and see, see what you can do, which is awesome. Uh, educate them, empower them. And then some, some personal stuff, right? Having family members that are ignoring things. That's potentially oftentimes why we see a lot of minority, like the, the black and brown population coming in sicker and, and worse because they're ignoring symptoms that are going on because they're afraid of the, the medical establishment. And uh, it, it's, it stinks to, to be able to diagnose them later and, and have worse outcomes because of that. So being able to, to help there. Uh, and so nice little aspirational thing of how you want to impact your community, impact the healthcare community, impact patients. Love it. Uh, and aspirational stuff. I love the aspirational stuff in conclusions to really understand why am I giving you this diploma? What are you going to do with it? Right? Of course, everyone wants to be a doctor. They're applying to medical school. But what specifically do you want to do? So I get to the end of your personal statement. It feels shorter because it is shorter because it's only 5,300 characters. And I go, okay, uh, do I know why you want to be a doctor? Yes. Did you say that you're going to be an amazing physician because you have all of these skills and traits and whatever? No, I don't care about any of that. All right. It's my opinion. The personal statement goal is to help me understand why you want to be a doctor. You've done that. Good job. All right. Then we keep going. Uh, TMDSAS is fun. It gives you more essays to write. <laughs> How did you... Um, the, the two essays for TMDSAS are uh, this first one here is the optional, which hint, hint, it's not optional. <laughs> don't don't right. leave this <laughs> optional. And, and this is uh, any other kind of anything else you want to tell us, any unique circumstances, life experiences. This can be used as a disadvantaged essay if you wanted to, to write it in that way. Uh, basically, anything else not previously presented. And then the required essay is this personal characteristics. Basically, this final sentence, describe your personal characteristics, background, talents, skills, et cetera, or experiences that would add to the educational experience of others. And so many people leave out this last part that would add to the educational experience of others. So that's a big part of this second essay. So let's take a look. You get, uh, was it 2,450 characters, something like that? 2,500 characters? About somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. I forget off the top of my head. Um, all right. And then we we have here, right, right off the bat, first generation college student, low income family, pursuing education while working. So you're, you're setting up context, right? You're like, hey you are going to be able to look at my grades, look at my MCAT score, look at my activities in context of being first gen, low income, working, all of this fun stuff. And you're kind of happy to do it, right? You're, you're pleased to be able to lay the foundation, which is awesome. Uh, single parent household. So again, context, providing lots of context for the reader. So you did, it looks like, just, just reading these first couple lines here, you use this as a disadvantaged essay for the most part. Yeah, and I wanted to also like kind of slip in there about my grades, like let them know the circumstances. I wasn't just in yep. school, I was working as well. So finding a way to artfully do that. <laughs> yeah, and you did a little bit in your personal statement, why do it in both places? Think. I was pretty worried about my grade. <laughs> that portion. Um, that makes sense. People are, but I, like, they, they, I want them to know that I know. So maybe a little overkill. But, yeah, no, that's okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So you you have here, right? Um, the oldest child, the responsibility, uh, just that, that kind of responsibility that you have to take on uh, while uh, and while, while you're participating in schools, extracurricular activities, et cetera, uh, contributing financially to the family, and having that responsibility to do all of this stuff. And, and as you go, you, you talk about uh, you working while taking courses. I continue to help support my family, uh, but it's not the same as, as it was in high school. And so it, it, you had a hard time to manage academics. So there's, again, that little bit of a red flag statement. And you, um, you were able to embark on this journey and continue. So... I think you 
you you paint this picture, you use this essay as exactly as it's meant to be, as a contextual essay to say, here are other pieces of my journey that don't come out in a personal statement, that don't come out in activities to really help you understand the full picture of who I am and, and how I got to be in front of you today. So perfect job there. Personal characteristics one. All right, so... Uh, you have some storytelling here. So right off the bat, some good storytelling, good showing here, roaming around the airport in France and trying to figure out, it was your turn. You were trying to figure out what's going on. Gave me a small glimpse of how language barriers can impact people moving to a new country. So 20 hours of traveling, stepping off a plane in South Africa, being the first person to travel outside the U.S., uh, so you go down this this journey of, of understanding these people and, and trying to figure out what's going on. So you have some kind of cultural competence uh, discussion going on here, uh, talking about, right, you're adapting to and learning the ways in the environment, greeting everyone in Zulu, and, and figuring that out. You talk about this. And then, so nice little story. So the question that I have, and I hope I, I get this in the last paragraph here is like, okay, how is this going to help others, right? Because that's the goal of this essay. So let's see, kind of seeing the US as the norm, obviously, we're not, (laughs) we're like 10% of the the world's population or something. And uh, being a minority here in the US, standing out and seeing cultural different differences, Um, using your ability to connect with people of different cultures, I hope to facilitate meaningful interactions with both my colleagues and patients. So I think you missed the point of this essay. It was still a good essay, right? It's such a common thing for students to do this part. Yeah. Right? Slip it at the end. Yeah. To add to the educational experience of others, I mm-hmm. see that as your classmates. And maybe that's just meaning that I'm making from it. But a lot of people want to go to, oh, I'm supposed to talk about how I'm going to impact patients. Mm-hmm. So it's a really strong essay. And I just I just think that connection to the end of, of, yes, slipping it in at the very end in one sentence versus trying to integrate it a little bit more. But but it shows uh, still a lot about you. So good job there. Uh, and then we get to the fun world of TMDSAS activities, which are miserable mm-hmm. because they only give you 300 characters. You have an unlimited amount of them, but you only have 300 characters. Uh, and they have, they're, they're broken up by... Um, by kind of title here. So this is under academic recognition. And so it's just all the dean's list, president's list stuff, non-academic recognitions. There's really not a ton that you can do with TMDSAS in terms of the 300 character description. You can't really storytell in 300 minutes or 300 characters. The, The kind of way that I talk about putting an anecdote and showing impact, like that just doesn't work. What you can do that I don't think a lot of people talk about is you can write things a little bit differently. You can bullet point. You can write maybe incomplete sentences. They don't have to be perfect sentences or a paragraph because it's only 300 characters. So you really want to be as impactful as impos- as, as possible in 300 characters. So when, when we look here, so you have leadership uh, being an RA, as an RA, right? Potentially even to save some characters there, you could have put role title RA, defined it there, and then just put RA here, right? There are some some shortcuts potentially that you could have done there. Uh, mentor to 22 high school aged girls. So nice impact with numbers there, which I love. Responsibility to act as an advisor, advisor, ensure their safety on campus. So that, that's perfect. That's about all you can do in 300 characters. Uh, so good job. Again, uh, every nation campus ministry student leader, maybe potentially like you use numbers here, like how many people were in these Bible group studies or group Bible studies um, to show that impact. Uh, again, numbers here, 400 students. So good job. Um As we continue on, it's interesting the way that TMDSAS has it, and we'll see if you did that. So this was under the leadership category, and you can see lead medical receptionist, like potentially that's paid employment of what what other categories on on other applications, but it's also lead 
uh, uh, leadership experience because you're the lead medical receptionist. You can put the same thing in different categories depending on on how you want to divvy it up. So um, you're responsible for training new employees. Again, numbers. How how many people were there? How many people were you responsible for? Would have been would have been interesting. Uh, so research activities as another category. You had a little bit of that. You have uh, healthcare activities here. You have some shadowing. You have uh, just volunteering in the hospital again. So let's let's look. Three hundred characters for these. First experience observing primary care. Received insight from the doctor. That's redacted. Uh, running private practice. Right. Super basic. It's not much you can do in three hundred characters. So it's fine. Uh, very 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 different than the other application services. Uh, again, hospital volunteer, so clinical experience, uh, what we would put on other applications, spending time with various patients, understood the value of patient trust in the ER, labor delivery, help create a comfortable environment for patients, etc. right? Super basic. There's not much you can do here. So for all of you applying to TMDSAS, it is unlike any of the other application services. And so you'll see uh, as we continue on that that that's what you did. You just kind of did as much as you could. So as I'm looking at it, um, you have that lead receptionist one here again. Um, and you can see this one has hours. The leadership one didn't right here. There's no hours tied to these. So there's not like you have to worry about double dipping hours and all of that fun stuff. Um, so lots of clinical experience, lots of shadowing, uh, thoracic surgery, pediatric palliative care, family medicine. You're just rocking and rolling. How did you get so much shadowing experience? Cold calling, um, my sister's doctor. Um, oh, I did a summer internship at a medical school here in Texas, and we did weekly shadowing. So that's where the majority of them came from. That helps. But the rest of it was cold calling and emailing. Nice. Nice. That's cool. Um, all right. So lots of great uh, activity here, working as a medical assistant. And again, lots of basic stuff, right? Taking vitals, update patients' charts, blah, blah, blah. Like basic, not in a bad way, but basic. That's all TMDSAS lets you have room for, unfortunately. Uh, again, another category here, community service activities. So again, the, the TMDSAS act, uh, application just has these categories, and then you just fill in as you go. So great, uh, lots of activities outside of clinical experiences and what you're doing, uh, what you're doing to help the community. More extracurriculars here, uh, running and lots of boring pounding the pavement stuff. <laughs> um, part of maps. Uh, again, as a, a maps member. So you're attending campus, uh, you're attending stuff here. Got it. Okay. Uh, and here, I'm assuming this is the, mm -hmm. um, at Long School of Medicine in San Antonio, that's where you were able to get a lot of shadowing. Yes. Awesome. All right. Uh, you weren't applying to vet school, so nothing mm -hmm. there. And then another category uh, is employment. So you can kind of see what you are spending your time with outside of quote unquote clinical experience and shadowing and all this other stuff. It's some kind of non-clinical employment uh, going on here. So server and RA and all of that fun stuff. Because that lead receptionist MA fits multiple categories, you put it in multiple categories, which is which is what you're supposed to do. What I would have loved to see here is a different description. Because you are entering it multiple times, right? So it's not just one entry and you're flagging it as as different categories you're literally going into each category putting in putting it in again so they saw this already up above <laughs> so it would have been nice to to see to expand a little bit more all right and then we get to TMDSAS does allow you to mark 3 as most meaningful you only get 500 characters versus 1325 like AMCAS allows you but then you're able to uh, mark which ones and and give those 500 characters. So program advisor and what you're doing here, you're giving a little story. And what did you do? The impact that you had. And you were, <laughs> you were 
up late with the kid. Um, a little sales pitchy, which is okay. That's that's the angle that you took, right? Uh, think quickly and carefully. Not my typical style, but it's okay. Not terrible. The rest of your application doesn't read that way, so it's, it's not over the top, I think, in terms of like uh, what you had mentioned earlier about telling your story versus telling the story that you think they want to hear. This kind of borders on, you think that's what they want to hear, so that's what you put. Um, yeah. But that's okay. That's that's the first time I pointed it out. We've read most of your application. So traveling outside of the US, going to um, Johannesburg, and what you saw there, um, just this impact that it had on you, uh, which is great. And then medical receptionist, uh, all of the fun stuff going on in the medical world outside of actual patient care and what that meant to you. TMDSAS does allow for future activities, planned activities, and what you're doing to do this. Again, another opportunity to write something a little bit different. And then we get to grades. And we see some of those some of those C's in there, some of those early struggles, uh, but lots of A's mixed in there, finishing strong with lots of A's, uh, which is awesome. So you had a, a nice upward trend, even though you, you struggled a little bit earlier. One thing to note, TMDSAS doesn't use pluses and minuses. They just uh, use everything flat. No, no plus minus. Awesome. Is there anything else we're missing? Um, MCAT score is not on the application. How how was the MCAT for you? Um, I took it three times. Okay. Um, the first time, yeah, I took it three times. First time, I did not need to take it. Um, <laughs> uh, the second time, I kind of picked up on how I needed to study, mm -hmm. but I still didn't need to take it. I had a test date and... I don't know what I thought was going to happen, but I think I was encouraged that I was doing better, but I still shouldn't have taken it, you know, hoping maybe I'll get an extra point or two or something on, I should have stuck with what I was getting on my practice course. I wasn't ready. Um, third time I uh, did better and I said, okay, this is it. I'm applying. Um, and I had a 503 the third time. Okay. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was where I was at. I was working while I was studying that, that last time. Um, and yeah, but I felt, I felt good about what I was doing. Um, but at the end, still a 503, not the most impressive score, um, but it got me in. Got you in. And yeah. Yeah. I just knew that with my application that my scores weren't going to wow anyone. So I needed to Tell my story. Tell your story. So yeah. between the first two tests and getting the 503, what did you do to, to change how you approached the MCAT? I did a lot of content review at the beginning, which is important for a foundation, yep. but that was a big, big focus of mine. I'm just trying to get every little nitty gritty detail. Yep. But then also I realized um, certain topics in biochem that were more intimidating towards me or intimidating for me, I didn't put in the time. Yeah. Um, I studied the psych soch things that felt better um, when I should have hammered in more on those topics. Um, so that other time, 503, I knew I was like, this is the last time I'm going to take it. I need to just just get in there, get down and dirty and study the things that were that I knew I was struggling with. As we wrap up here, what what kind of words of wisdom do you have for the student following in your footsteps who may have a similar path to you? I would say you can do it. I truly say, I know everyone says, if I can do it, you can do it. But I, I sincerely mean, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, when I applied, I was told, don't apply yet. Are you sure you only want to apply to Texas schools? Um, I am married, so that kind of, we wanted to stay in Texas. So that's kind of why I didn't branch out. But if you have a goal, just do it. Just try it. Um, if you have to retake the MCAT, if you have to um, reapply, that's okay. Um, but you definitely can get there. 